fellow hams and YouTubers? Well, this is the summary or follow-up overview video of the mini loop, which is now done. My experimental miniature mag loop that I was going to call the scrounge loop because I built it from junk that I scrounged around the basement. If you're interested in watching me build the original um, version of it, I'll link that video below. Uh, you'll see the methods and pieces of uh, stuff I used to put together to make the loop. But it's done now. It's uh, uh, to a point where I'm happy with it. And uh, we're going to take a quick look at the final design. I'll give you measurements and, and uh, other information if you want to try to build one of your own. And I've shot a bunch of video of uh, various relevant parts and pieces. And we'll, uh, we'll include clips from that. And I've shot a, a couple of uh, on-air QSOs with it, so you can see it uh, actually using it on the air and actually working. I should really script these things, shouldn't I? I'm getting old. Anyway, let's take a closer look at the final design. Okay, it is one foot square. This is the bottom of a melt carton or melt crate, so it's one foot each side. There are two turns of wire around the outside. I used multi-conductor Ethernet cable because it's what I had on hand. I just tied all the conductors, conductors together so that they're acting more like one big wire instead of eight small wires. Um, up here is one-fifth the size, approximately, an old Tupperware container with a single loop of wire around the inside that lines up with the middle of this outer loop. That's the coupling loop. The coax connects right here. Um, this is an embedded field strength meter that I built to use as a tuning aid. Uh, it's a little more accurate to tune a magnetic loop this way than it is using the SWR on your radio. If you had a really good high quality SWR meter in line with the loop, that would be just as accurate, but this is nice and easy. It's right in front of your face when you're, when you're fiddling with the tuning, uh, so it's, it's quick and easy to uh, peak the loop. You peak for maximum power. I did a video on building this little field strength meter that uh, I embedded here. I'll go ahead and show you a clip of that now. Field strength meter is done. Here's the detail. So we've got two diodes. <coughs> a loop of wire. This is pickup wire. The RF is picked up by the wire. One diode negative into the meter on the negative terminal. Other diode positive in down to the pot. The other end of the pot is on ground. So the pot gives us a wipe between full on rectified DC and ground. And the center of the pot goes to the positive side of the meter. So RF that's being picked up gets rectified to DC, which drives the meter. And uh, that's all there is to it. And the wire just loops around the inside of the case. So now I just got to mount this, put a knob on it, and uh, and we'll be done. Okay, so that was the embedded field strength meter. This is the tuning capacitor. This is a butterfly type capacitor. The outer sets of plates are where your electrical connections are. The inner set of plates is a butterfly shape that rotates in and meshes with the other plates and then becomes a, uh, a single conductor between them, uh, which then gives you your capacitance. A couple of advantages to a butterfly capacitor uh, one, it can rotate 360 degrees if you motorize this. You do not have to worry about end stops. Two, and this was something I was not aware of but surprised me, um, hand capacitance does not affect this. Uh, a traditional variable cap that has uh, electrical connection to the center shaft, when you get your hand near it, the capacitance changes, and it was hard to tune. As soon as you reached in to tune the loop, it would shift in tuning. That does not happen with a butterfly cap. I can reach right in here and touch this and get my hand all around here and the tuning does not change. So butterfly cap, good idea. This one is about 8 to 50 picofarads. With two turns on the outer one foot form and an 8 to 50 picofarad cap, you get a range of around 14 megahertz to 28.3. So you get three bands and part of a fourth. This is just a little fine-tuning thing I threw together, a piece of wood dowel and a little drive belt so I could tune it very, very precisely. Made it easier, a lot easier than trying to tune it with this, just the big knob. So 
that's just a little drive belt on a little dowel sticking through a wood block as a bearing. Like I said, it's the scrounge loop. It's just scrounged together with bits and bobs. Um, to increase the capacitance and thus drop the loop down, I wanted to get to 40 meters. Um, I made a custom high voltage trimmer. I took a high voltage trimmer and I uh, modified it to get down to the capacitance range that I wanted. I did another video on that trimmer and I will link that in the description as well so go watch that video to see how I made this. If I clip this onto the connection points for that cap, that, that increases the capacitance, it's still adjustable, but it increases it and drops the entire loop down in frequency to where it covers 40 meters. If I back this trimmer out about a turn, the range shifts up and the loop covers 30 meters. If I crank it in about a turn, the range shifts down and the loop covers 60 meters. So pretty flexible in one small antenna. Um, I can get it from 60 meters all the way up to the CW and digital portion of 10 meters. And it does work. Uh, here's a video clip of me going around it with a field strength meter that I built to see how the field radiates. Okay, in about six seconds it's going to go into transmit. I'm standing directly in front of the loop. I'm trying to get the camcorder to focus on this. Okay, there we go. So I don't know if you can see that, the meter is barely deflecting. Now we're going to walk around, staying about the same distance. I'm getting off the ends, edge of the loop. You can see that deflection came up. If I go down lower, it drops a little bit. If I raise up higher, yeah, it comes up a little bit. And then around the back side of the loop, it drops off. So you can see the nulls in the loop design. Off the side of the loop, the RF comes up. There's a little bit of a peak and we get around the front of it and it drops right off. And if I get around the other side of it, this is tricky. Yeah, we've got another peak on this side of it. Okay, and as you can see, like a regular magnetic loop, it's mostly a toroidal pattern around the outer edge with a very strong null um, in the middle. That's nice because you can sit in front of this thing and not worry about sitting in an RF field. You're in the null, and your radio would be in the null. Or you could rotate the loop to null out a localized noise source. Um, now, as promised, a couple of on-air demos. Well, here we are. The mini loop is, is configured for 40 meters. Got the capacitor clipped on there. You can see it's transmitting. The field strength meter is deflected. We're in QSO JT65 with N4JT. He's either in Florida or Texas. So, uh, yeah. Little loops working. 40 meters and one foot loop, two and a half watts on the uh, Yezu FT817. Okay, it's uh, KB9RLW, KB9RLW, QRP, QRP, 5 watts into a 1 foot square, a 1 foot square magnetic loop experimental antenna. So uh, it's about the worst possible uh, uh, condition that I could have, and we have a solar storm, so I'm, I'm just glad you can hear me at all, Rich, over. Well, how much power are you running? 5 watts. 5 watts QRP into a 1 foot square antenna, over. What's your location? Uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Fort Wayne, Indiana. Okay. Yeah, Roger on the magnetic loop. 5 watts, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Roger. Yep, Roger, Roger. And the antenna is only 1 foot square. 1 foot square. It's tiny. Experimental, over. Well, I got to tell you what, uh... I'm getting about 30 to uh, maybe 40% of what you're saying. There at the end portion, there's some traffic next to me. You know, kind of attenuating you know, a little bit, but even if it wasn't there, it would definitely be an effort on my part. Um, I'm talking about a halfway 40 meter antenna, of course, uh, but about 85 foot. And I'm oriented uh, to the side of you, so I uh, didn't catch your name or name. Here's Richard Joe. He's up in Cleveland, I don't know if it's probably him, I'm sure he was, and he's not.
I just switched to the external antenna, so you guys should be able to hear me now, over. Okay, well, it's it's only 5 watts here, QRP, 5 watts. The experimental antenna I was on a moment ago is a one-foot square mini magnetic loop that I threw together with some junk out of the basement, just as an experiment. So uh, I'm just glad that you could hear me down there in Indy. It, it does well on digital modes and CW, but I hadn't tried voice yet. So. Uh, uh, Rich, thanks uh, for uh, making the effort to uh, try to dig me out of the noise there. That was uh, that was a nice little uh, test of this experimental teeny antenna. Did you copy that, Joe? Uh, I copied some of it, and then he dropped down. I thought I thought he was copying you, though. I, I thought I heard him say uh, something about I don't know if he copied me down there south and in southern India. Okay, so there you go. The scrounge loop or mini mag loop. And this will be the last video I do on this project. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. 73.